All right, today is our second day on section 7.4. Um, this time, the, the name of the section is actually Exponential Growth and Decay, and this time we're actually doing Exponential Growth and Decay. Um, yesterday, I had you guys watch a video about separable differential equations, which we will use to, um, to do this Exponential Growth and Decay. So suppose you have the, num the number of bighorn sheep in a population, um, oh, I actually skipped a picture that had bighorn sheep in them. I guess I shouldn't have done that. And a population increases at a rate that is proportional to the number of sheep present, at least for a while. Um, and that's true for any population of living creatures. Other things that increase or decrease at a rate proportional to the amount present include radioactive material and money in an interest-bearing account and coronavirus cases. Um, yeah, it might be too soon to do a mathematical problem dealing with the rate of increase of, math, of uh, coronavirus, but um, that's probably something I'll do next year. Anyway, um, if the rate of change is proportional to the amount present, the change can be modeled by a differential equation that looks like this. We are um, saying it's a rate of change with respect to time, and it's um, proportional to the amount present, which means that you can multiply the amount present times some constant, and that's what that means. So this is the equation that we would start with. So if you see these words, the rate of change here, the rate of change is proportional to the amount present, um, you would have this equation that you would have here. Um, so what we're going to do is separable differential equations. So we're going to, the k is a constant, so it's going to go with the dt for time. The y is getting divided on t the other side, so we're going to have that. And then that way we can integrate both sides. So on the left, we get ln y, the absolute value of y, because remember, y could be negative, but it can't here, because when you take the log, natural log, it has to be um, positive. And over here, we're just going to get kt plus a constant. So that's when we integrate both sides. So next, we need to solve for y. So we need to undo natural log. So we're going to exponentiate with the base of e on both sides. So then we're going to get the absolute value of y equals, and then they use that rule where they split it apart. So remember, when you're multiplying ba um, with like bases, you add the exponent. So we're just going the other way. And then they chose to put the e to the c first because that's a constant. E is a constant, you're raising it to a constant power, so it's a constant. So then what we see next is um, getting rid of absolute value by just saying it could be plus or minus. And then this next step, which will be, seem a little tricky, is they've just renamed the plus or minus E to the C power. That whole thing is a constant. So they just renamed it and they used an A instead. Um, just so that it doesn't look so complicated, but it's just a constant, so you are allowed to do that. So we have y equals a times e to the kt. So next we're going to use an initial value. So when t equals 0, we're going to say that y is, we're going to call that y naught, n-a-u-g-h-t, y naught. So, um, so plugging that in, and then remember that means e to the 0 power, which is 1, because anything to the 0 power is 1. So we get y naught equals a. So now using substitution, going back up here, and in place of the a, they placed a y naught. And so we have this equation here. Now, we used this equation last year in college algebra a lot. Um, we use this to model exponential growth and exponential decay. Um, we did a lot of different problems where we had this same basic formula. So you're going to be using that again with, um, with the assignment that actually you will end up doing tomorrow, but it will be using these formulas. So we have the formula for exponential change. If the constant k is positive, then the equation represents growth. If k is negative, then the equation represents decay. And um, in this PowerPoint, we're talking just really about um, the formulas and where they come from. Um, the problems in the book basically are using the, the formulas, is really what you're doing. It's going to kind of feel like you're not doing calculus, because it's going to feel more like the problems we did in college algebra. Um, and I do want to recommend, if you um, need a refresher on those, that the problems in your textbook in this section, they do go through some um, examples, so you might want to take a look there. 
Co um, continuously compounded interest is another thing. We talked about compounding interest last year in college algebra. So if money is invested in a fixed interest account where the interest is added to the account k times per year, the amount present after t years, and this was um, one of the, the, the equations we used where a naught represented um, the initial amount that you would deposit it, and um, then you had your, your, your rate, and this K, if it was, say, monthly, K would be 12. If it was daily, K would be 365. So if you remember when we did some, some problems like that, and if you knew what those values were, you can just plug them in. And I think that's one of the things that you'll have to do on your homework using this formula. So if the money is added back more frequently, you make a little more money. So the more frequently they add the money back. Um, and so there is something called continuously compounded interest. And um, of course, that doesn't mean that somebody's continuously working on your interest rate. But what that looks like, um, and you could do this with calculus to solve that. We are not going to do that. I know here it says you'll learn it in chapter eight, but we don't. We here's some good news, you guys. This is the last lesson in chapter five, and we only have three sections to cover in chapter eight. So, um, so, so we're making progress. Um, so we don't actually get to the part where we do this using the limit. So we just are going to use the formula. Um, so you end up with this. So continuously compounded interest, it's, um, is the amount that you have in your account is your initial amount times e to the rt, where r is the, the interest rate expressed as a decimal, and t is the time in years. And that's the formula. And notice it looks a lot like y equals y naught e to the kt. It's the same formula. Um, sometimes in, we use it this way, where p represents the principal that you are um, investing. Same thing. Radioactive decay is another situation where we use exponential functions. And sometimes they'll write this with this format instead of why not e to the kt, they'll put a negative k. Um, the reason for that is so that k, the, the rate of decay, can be expressed as a positive value. So sometimes you'll see that written that way. Um, half-life is a big deal. And half-life is the time required for half the material um, to decay. So, so when we're working with half-life, this, if you think about um, this part, this right side of the formula, um, if you start with why not, then then how much you have present, then half of why not is is what you would have present after the um, one half life. So if you wanted to figure out how long it would take for half of it to decay, um, then then this is how you would set that up. The amount that you now have is half of what you original ha originally had. And the nice thing about this is the why nots cancel out. So then it really doesn't matter how much you started with. If you are doing a half-life problem and you want to find out the time it takes for half to have to be um, half of what you started with, um, the amount you started with doesn't matter because it's going to cancel out. So then we are solving, um, where did the ln come from? It's because we're trying to solve up here for, for our time. So, um, so we're taking, we have to undo exponentiating. So they're doing the natural log on both sides. Now, remember that when you, and you might, you may or may not remember the rule for logs, um, that log of, um, let's see, I think we had it, let me grab a pin here that I can write with. Um, we had, um, I think it looked like this, oh, not like that though. Okay, I don't know how to do the eraser on this pen, so. <laughs> um, if we had something like this, that was ln m minus ln n. And that was one of the rules for logs, and that's all they're applying here. Um, so we do that. And um, then the ln 1 is 0, because e to what power is equal to 1? And that would give you 0. So they are just simplifying this, is what they're doing. So then um, cancel out the negatives on both sides. So we get t equals ln 2 over k, and where k is the decay rate. So if you want to know um, how long it takes for any uh, to have half left for the half-life, um, if you wanted to know how long it takes to have half remaining, um, you take ln2 divided by whatever the decay rate is, and that will give you that time for the half-life. So that's a formula that comes up frequently. 
Another um, example that deals with exponential equations that's in this section is called Newton's Law of Cooling. Espresso left in a cup will cool to the temperature of the surrounding air. The rate of cooling is proportional to the difference in temperature between the liquid and the air. So the rate of cooling would be a differential equation, and it's proportional. Um, so so they um, so you you could kind of set it up like that initial problem. Um, so it look, looks like this. Here is the rate the rate of cooling. So that's our differential equation, or this portion here, is proportional. Um, so here's this constant. Um, it is proportional to the difference in temperature between the liquid and the air. And it has this minus because this is going to be a decay. It's getting cooler. So, um, so we have this negative in, in that case so that, so that our decay rate can be considered a positive. Um, so if you were to solve this, you don't have to. If you were to solve this, you would get this rule for Newton's law of cooling. Um, T is the, the temperature at any particular time. Um, there's got a lot of T's here. <coughs> T sub S is the temperature of the surrounding medium, and that's going to be a constant. So like if you were in a room that had a temperature of whatever degrees. Um, your T naught is your initial temperature of your um, espresso. Oops. And this little t is the time that we typically might, you know, would be wanting to solve for. So um, you just want to make sure you know what all of those t's are representing. So those are all the formulas you are going to be using in your assignment. Um, your assignment for today, you're going to be doing a few problems that was similar to yesterday's lesson I showed you. Um, the assignment that you do tomorrow is going to have um, problems from this lesson where you're using these formulas. Again, please look in your textbook if you need additional help with some of those examples. See ya.